guys, it's Jen and I am here to share with you some new products that I received from Arteza. Actually, I think the watercolors have been around for a while, but the, I, I'm pretty sure that this watercolor pad is new. So what I have here is the 60 set of premium watercolors. Holy cow, this is a big set. I'll show you in just a second. And also their new watercolor paper, which is expert. It is nine by 12, 140 pound. And there are 14 sheets in here and it's 100% cotton. So this is a good quality watercolor paper and um, it's just a nice, a nice weight, a nice texture. And I'm glad that it's 100% cotton. So I was excited to try this out. Um, it's double sided. So both sides are textured. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but uh, that's, it is. <laughs> And let me show you the watercolors because holy cow, this is a lot of watercolors. I probably, I've already opened these and played around with them. I will say that. Um, I, I will tell you that you probably don't need 60 colors, but they're really pretty colors. And so um, if you're interested, it's pretty inexpensive. I think this would be a good set for people who aren't quite um, familiar with mixing colors because there are a lot of colors to choose from here. And so I think that would be a great way to uh, have a bunch of colors without having to mix. That being said, if you're gonna put these in a palette, you're gonna need a pretty big palette. So <laughs> uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so, um, oh, full disclosure, Arteza sent these to me, uh, but they did let me, like I kind of said, I would love to work with these things and, and they were cool with it, so. Um, these are the colors. They're just gorgeous. I will tell you that they didn't come exactly like this. I put them in rainbow order. They were kind of in rainbow order, but I put them even more in rainbow order. So they come in these little trays. I'll just pull them out here so you can see them all. And then I'm going to move them off to the side while, because I already have them um, poured out in trays. I prefer to uh, play with when you have uh, two watercolors, I prefer to pour them into a palette and then use them dry. And so I've already uh, done that. The day I got them, I kind of played with them a bit. But here you can see them all. Look at all these colors, holy cow. And doesn't rainbow just make you happy? It's not in rainbow order uh, right now, so that's kind of bothering me. So let's just switch these around. But you can see that um, they have a, a wide variety of colors. There are a lot of greens. Um, I don't think that you probably need that many greens, but um, if you do a lot of florals, which I do, I think it's nice to have greens. So there's that. Um, so here are the colors and then here's some neutrals. There are a lot of neutrals as well. And there's some good colors for um, doing like skin tones and things like that. Each tube has the, like the pigment on them, the pigments. So this one is PW6, PV23, and PV19. And then it also has the um, light fastness and the, let's see, transparency. See, it shows you the little guide on here. So the light fastness are the little plus signs, the transparency right there and then the pigment numbers and they're on each tube so if that's something that you're interested in or that you know about um, you will probably appreciate that. I personally like right now I'm still kind of in the just playing around phases of watercoloring. I love watercolor and I'm super into it and I have a lot and I have some very nice um, watercolors and stuff like that but as far as like the pigments and the um, well, the transparency I do care about, but the pigments and the, um, and the light fastness, it's not something that I care about quite yet. So let me show you, I did do a little swatch of the colors, so I'll show you them here. So these are the different colors that you get. There is one very neon pink color, um, and the lime green is pretty neon, but the rest of the colors are just really pretty. The vermilion red is absolutely gorgeous and what I tried to do when I was um, swatching these was put down the color wet and then I added a little bit more on one side and took a little off the other side just so I could see how they performed and you can see that some of them have like a you can see like these blues have a little bit more they um I don't know if it's the way that I put them on because 
could be user error, but like uh, they have a little bit more granulation, which some people like that. Um, and some of them are really smooth, like the reds. And that could have, again, been the way that I was swatching these out because I don't really know what I'm doing, but I like to play. <laughs> and so you can see there are lots of like yellows and greens in here, lots of blues too. There's actually a lot of a lot of colors. I wish there were maybe a couple more reds and oranges. I feel like there's maybe a little bit missing in the orange, but look at that spiced apple color. That is just pretty. And the peach, um, those are my jam. I love those kinds of colors. Um, and so I just think that there are lots of really pretty colors and I just had a lot of fun playing with them. So what I did, I'm going to go ahead and get these out of the way. We are going to not use these for now. I'm going to just push them off to the side because I have put them into this little Magello um, watercolor palette and I just put them in rainbow order pretty much so I started with red and went all the way around and then a little bit so you can see I just put a tiny little dot of each color in now one thing that is not my favorite is the fact that um, they well and maybe it's because I didn't put I don't know they break up a little bit they don't quite stay in um, so you can see that the little pieces have broken up, which is hard when you're wanting to close a palette because then the little pieces kind of roll around, but, um, you know, whatever, it's fine. These are really, really fun. I, I would definitely suggest them for any crafter, which is what I mostly am doing. And, uh, they're really fun to play with. You can see this painting that I did the other day when I was playing with it. The watercolor paper is great. Let's go ahead and just get playing. I'm just going to paint a little bit and show you kind of, we'll just play around for a minute so that you can see how the colors perform. So I am just going to tear out a piece of paper actually. And I don't really know like what people expect or want to see from a review video about watercolors, but I'll just show you what I, <laughs> what I would do. So I took a while and so I decided to speed this part up, but I just grabbed myself some water and I've got my paintbrush. This is a an Escoda Perla brush. It's a size eight round. And I'm just kind of uh, mixing a couple colors to get this pink color that I love, just a bright pink. And just starting to create some flowers. Um, I love dropping in other colors when the paint is still wet. So I dropped in a little purple to the outside of this kind of rose. Now, of course, you wouldn't see a rose really like this, but I just like to play and it doesn't matter to me if it looks like something you would really see. So now I'm using peach, I believe, and some of the spiced apple to make this second flower. And it's going to kind of go a little bit behind that rose. And I'm just painting the individual leaves. I think one of the things um, that I need to remember is when you're uh, painting flowers with, when you're painting with watercolors, leaving those spaces is really what defines the shape. And so uh, if you don't leave those spaces, you're uh, flowers or whatever you're painting will start looking kind of like a blob and so I'm trying to make sure to leave those spaces. I'm making a little yellow kind of I don't know what what this kind of flower would be but something kind of like a um, a lilac and but I'm painting it yellow because I make up flowers when I paint and um, I'm getting some green now, wanting to put in some leaves before my paint, um, before I paint some more flowers, just so I can kind of get the shape of what this piece is going to be. So I'm using some green. Now, one thing I like to do when you are mixing greens, sometimes the greens that come right out of any of the tubes are not a green you would find in nature. So if you want something that looks a little bit more natural, you can add in a little bit of pink or red. Uh, to your green to make it feel more earthy. Um, I've grabbed a small brush here. I don't even know what brush that is, it, um, but I am using a, a finer brush to just kind of put in some of the details. Now I went in with that before my yellow flowers were 
dry and the green totally leaked all into the yellow. So I'll fix that later, but I'm just going to put in some more little leaves here and I am just kind of trying to fill out this arrangement, making a few different types of leaves, trying to use a few different colors. Now I mixed some purple and some blue and I'm making some little berries here. And when I make berries, I like to just do a little circle and then leave a little white spot kind of as a highlight. Um, and then I decided to make some more kind of peachy flowers that are kind of hanging down. And so this is what the flower looks like hanging upside down that I'm painting now. So I'm going to paint a few little buds like that. And I will add in some more leaves while I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit. Um, I'm trying to add different sizes and stuff. I... I struggle a little bit with composition um, and so I'm trying to be more aware of uh, where things are and and how I can fill out the arrangement and make it look pleasing without going too far because I often add in too many leaves and too many things and then it just ends up looking like a big big blobby floral mess but um, here I'm just playing and having fun with it so uh, I added in one more flower just because I felt like it needed to fill in that space. And then I'm going to add in some leaves around my berries. I'm adding in some like kind of taller, longer leaves with those berries. And I decided to add a couple more. So I just added in a few. And I'm just painting some more leaves. Uh, just filling in some spaces, making some things look a little bit better. Um, I like to mix my greens up together, so I just, I don't even know what the greens are. I don't ever use the same color pretty much because I'm just constantly mixing more. Um, so I do, as I mentioned before, like when it when it's still wet, I like to drop in more color just so it has kind of a, a very, a varied look. Uh, so it it looks a little bit more natural even though I'm not going for completely natural. That rose is pretty much dry so I'm going in with some more purple just to kind of add a little bit more to it and make it a little bit more defined and give it a little bit more something. And I'm using that small brush again to go in on um, the leaves of that flower and I'm drawing in some lines just to give it a little bit like I'm adding in details now is what I'm doing. So I'm just adding in some lines in a slightly darker shade of that pinky color. And then I am kind of adding in some definition to these little flowers at the bottom as well. And I'll also add some veins to my leaves too. So that's what I'm trying to find a color for now. And I'm just going to just draw some lines on some of the leaves, just a one straight line. And then on other leaves, I will go ahead and add in um, like the little veins and you'll see it uh, a little bit better at the end of the video I believe so just adding in all of those little details that really make the painting pop it made it makes it um, it takes it to the next level kind of so um, I'm going ahead and adding in some kind of dark reddish brown to the center of that pink flower just to give it a little bit more definition. I felt like it needed it and then because I'm impatient I'm taking my heat gun and drying it up so that I can go in with some more detailing and uh, I go in a little bit more on that flower. And sorry you keep seeing my head I'm just leaning over to see what I'm doing here and um, adding a little bit more to the leaves here. Just a little bit more to that yellow piece. I think I added in a little too much green in the end, but whatever, it's done, right? It's just what it is. <laughs> I kind of just have to let things go. If this were something I were pa was painting for, um, for somebody else, or I don't know, that I was going to scan in and use for some design work, I would... I would definitely be more careful with it and think about it more, but because this is just for fun and just for practice, then it kind of just doesn't matter and I'm just going to go with the flow and, and do what I want and keep um, adding layers or doing whatever I feel like I need to until it looks cute enough for what I want. I got a little bit of paint in a spot I didn't want and I actually used my little um, 
it's like an adhesive remover rubbery square there. I used that to get it off and it actually worked pretty well. So I was happy <laughs> about that. Um, I'm drying up these leaves so I can add in the veins. I want, I'm being lazy again. I'm being too impatient and I just really want to add in the detail. And so I, uh, dried them with my heat gun again. And that's just a ranger heat tool. And more veins on my leaves. I'm trying to, I'm also, what I want to do here to the flower is further define the edges. They feel like they're kind of getting blobby. So I'm just, I added a little bit more dark purple to the edge of the rose. And then um, I'm going to just try to make it a little bit better. All right, so here are my two paintings using the Arteza watercolors, the premium watercolor 60 set and the watercolor paper. And I have to say, I really like the watercolor paper. The watercolors are very fun to play with. I think that anything that I have had problems with is probably user error from um, lack of practice. I just need to get back in the practice of painting. But I had a lot of fun and I'm really happy with the way that this last one turned out even though I had some mishaps along the way. So I hope that you'll check them out. You can check out the link in my profile for more information and let me know what watercolors you're loving um, if you've been looking for a set uh, and what you've checked out and what you've loved. So. If you decide that these watercolors or something else in the Arteza store catches your eye, you can use the code GENSCOW3 to get 10% off. And that price is through the 14th of March. So I hope that you'll check that out. Here are a couple other videos that you might enjoy. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I post new videos every week of all of the crafty things that I'm doing. And thank you so much again for watching. I hope to see you back here very soon.